We start with Team Orange at the restaurant. If Yang's team aren't students from Haven, then what's she doing here? Why did she say she was? I'll call Ozpin. We can tell him something's weird about this. He pulls out his scroll and starts to type in numbers. Neo waves her hands to get Ruby's attention, then points to the club across the street. Blake and her team are quickly walking away from the club. Shoot! Team Boom are moving! What? What's happening with Team Boom? The others glance at each other. Oscar's shoulders slump. What? You guys aren't telling me something. What is it? Ruby groans, watching as Team Boom turn a corner and out of sight. She quickly stands and looks directly into Oscar's eyes. Honestly, Oscar, I don't know how much I can trust you with this stuff. You've been weird all weekend. I thought you were supposed to be our teammate, but you've only been prioritizing Ozpin. Come on, guys. We don't have time to wait around. Let's go. Ruby rushes past Oscar, Neo right behind her. Jean digs through his pockets and leaves some silver coins on the table next to their plate of nachos, then gives Oscar one last look before following the girls. Oscar stands there for a moment, staring at the scroll in his hand. Ozpin's contact number pulled up. Then he looks back up and watches as the rest of his team jog across the street, following after Team Boom. He looks back and forth between the two, trying to decide what he should do. We cut back to Yang's team, jumping down from the gears in Ozpin's office, ambushing Team Posey. Yang comes flying down, a burning fist smashing into the ground by Weiss, who barely has time to sidestep out of the way. Yang's glowing hair illuminates the room in an ominous yellow light with hard black shadows. Mercury swings down from a gear and high kicks Cinder in the head. She recovers quickly and wields her dual blades. Her and Mercury battle against each other. Penny unleashes her blades and batters away Vernal, who is diving in to attack her. Penny then glances over to Weiss. She's backpedaling from the larger opponent, Yang throwing heavy flaming fists at her relentlessly. Penny runs and spins her blade like a propeller, crashing into Yang, who barely has time to block the hit. Yang goes flying back, crashing into a decorative statue and destroying it. Penny stands side by side with Weiss, their blades at the ready. Vernal leaps up onto the gears, using them to jump over to Yang, grabbing her arm. Get up! The two stand side by side, staring down Weiss and Penny. Ilya bends backwards, almost in the shape of an L, to dodge Nora's mighty hammer as it swings overhead. Ilya whips out her weapon, and the bolts of lightning zip around Nora as the whip element cracks in the air, slapping away her hammer. Nora pauses and smiles. Ilya's weapon cracks again, but this time Nora grabs hold of it in her hand. Ilya gasps as Nora drags her in closer, holding the electricity-fueled whip close to her heart. The energy courses through her, and Ilya's eyes widen as Nora starts to spark with her own pink lightning. Nora screams and throws a lightning-fueled punch, crashing into Ilya's gut. The blow sends her flying into a dark corner of the room. A few sparks of her weapon's electricity illuminate her briefly, showing she's still conscious, but quickly she's left in the darkness. We cut back to Cinder and Mercury, trading and blocking blows from each other. Mercury grabs back onto a gear overhead and pulls himself up onto the gears, kicking out a wind bullet from his legs. Cinder slices the wind bullet in half, the two halves blowing vicious winds past her on each side. She runs and leaps off a wall, jumping up and landing on one of the gears as well. Mercury and Cinder hop from one turning gear to the next, ascending and descending on the various gears as they try to stay out of each other's reach. Cinder manages to grab hold of Mercury's ankle. Her eyes widen as she realizes it's all made of metal, and then her hand starts to glow orange as she starts to superheat his ankle, the metal starting to melt. He gasps and blasts another wind bullet right at her. Cinder screams angrily as she falls, crashing back down to the floor. Weiss and Penny stand back to back. Penny's blades circle the two of them for protection, while Weiss summons many small glyphs, launching small beams of elemental strikes at the girls. Yang and Vernal circle them, battering Penny's swords while dodging Weiss's elemental blasts, when suddenly Nora yells angrily and leaps in with them. Pink lightning bolts illuminate the room more than Yang's hair, and her heavy hammer easily blows away Penny's swords. Weiss jabs out with her rapier and it sinks into Nora's shoulder, but Nora ignores the strike. Penny flinches away as the pink lightning bolts grow closer. Then she becomes stern and she grabs onto Nora's wrist. The pink lightning courses into Penny and Weiss yells. Penny! Only Weiss is then surprised as the electricity starts to turn bright green, changing the color of the room again. Nora's jaw drops as three of Penny's swords spin quickly together, then shoots out a huge green laser-like attack into Nora, sending her flying into the elevator door. 
No, Nora! Yang turns to run towards Nora, but suddenly Cinder intercepts and Yang has barely enough time to block her swords as they come flying towards her. Come on, hothead, you wanna play with fire? Cinder pushes Yang away and raises a hand. A screaming swirl of orange energy glows from beneath Yang and suddenly she's engulfed in a small explosion. It looks like she's entirely consumed by the flames and Cinder smirks, but her expression drops as Yang starts to laugh. The glow on Yang's hair burns brighter and her eyes flare bright red. Wrong choice. Yang lashes out and grabs hold of Cinder's arms and with a quick motion, bends over backwards and suplexes Cinder into the spot where her mini explosion happened. The ground below the two girls splinters, then shatters. The two start to fall down the new chasm created below them. Yang lets go of Cinder and fires her gauntlet. The momentum of her bullet throws her back up and she lands back in the office again. Cinder sinks one of her swords into the wall in front of her, slowing down until she stops, dangling from the wall with only darkness below her. Cinder grimaces as she watches Yang leap over the gap in the floor back towards the rest of the fighting, the room being briefly illuminated various shades of yellow, pink, and green as the others fight out of sight. We cut to Team Boom, walking onto the docks, looking around as they reach the center of it. Okay, we finally meet this man. Blake looks back over her shoulder, staring intensely at a stack of crates labeled SDC. She stares hard at that direction for a moment, then hums to herself and turns back away. We transition to behind the crates to reveal Ruby, Jean, and Neo pressed against them, hiding from Team Boom. Neo pulls out her scroll and holds it up, revealing text she's written into it. They really are up to something. Ruby grabs Neo's scroll and types something else in after her, then shows the others. Do you think this has something to do with the relics they talked about? A noise startles the three, and Jean draws his sword and points it towards the direction of the sound. Turning the corner, we reveal Oscar, creeping closer to them. He looks around and quickly notices the rest of his team. Noticing their hiding poses, Oscar crouches down and quietly approaches them, joining them behind the crates. Neo types quickly on her scroll and holds it up for Oscar to read. Don't make a noise. Team Boom are nearby. Oscar grabs her scroll and types back. Why are you tracking them? They said something suspicious about relics in Forever Fall, and they've been acting oddly all day. We think they might be stealing dust. Oscar reads the scroll, and we can clearly see he's a little startled. Then he looks up and looks each of them in the eye, one by one. Neo holds out her hand and he gives her the scroll again, and she types something else quickly. We think the relics are related to Ozpin somehow. Do you know about this? Oscar types and holds the scroll up. I'll tell you all about it later, after we handle Team Boom. Ruby nods and smiles to him. Suddenly, their hair is blown backwards as an airship flies in overhead. Team Orange huddle closer together while Neo pockets her scroll. Team Boom look up as the airship flies in overhead. Melanie crosses her arms. Does this idiot want to get caught? Yeah, he's not very inconspicuous, is he? The airship lands nearby, and Torchwick throws open the doors to the ship, a ramp automatically lowering as he walks down to meet the others. Behind him are two other figures. Talk, who's talking on a scroll, and Hazel. Wow, look at you all with your classy little masks and everything. It's about time we met our employer. If you want our help, we need to know more about what it is you're trying to accomplish here. Hey, calm down, kitty cat. We have a job to do first. Talk hangs up the phone and turns to Roman. Okay, Torchwick, Watts says the security system's down. We've got 15 minutes to get everything on board. Hazel, start grabbing the dust. Hazel hums in confirmation and immediately walks towards a few crates of dust and picks up two easily in each arm. Torchwick turns to Team Boom and claps his hands. Chop chop, we have a time limit. You want to know what all the dust is for? Well, it won't be for anything if we don't get everything we need. Blake groans, but Sun places a hand on her shoulder. Let's just get this finished as quick as we can, right? Blake nods, and the four of them start teaming up, needing two people each to pick up and carry a crate. As they move more and more crates, we cut over to Team Orange. They glance over at each other. Neo shrugs at Ruby to imply asking, what do we do? Ruby grimaces and peeks over a crate and gasps quietly. 
Hazel is walking towards the crates they're hiding behind. Ruby ducks out of sight and they all look at each other worriedly. Oscar raises his hands as Hazel's figure comes closer and closer. Just as he's about to reach the crates, Oscar's eyes flash gold and the large man stops suddenly. A soft glow surrounds his body and he suddenly starts to walk in reverse. Confusion across his face as his body starts to move involuntarily. Hazel, what are you doing? Ruby glances over the top of a crate and sees everyone stop and stare at Hazel's direction. Something's wrong. No, duh. Obviously. Sun drops his end of a crate and Blake groans in frustration as she's unable to hold up the other side she was carrying. Sun pulls out his guns and opens fire in the direction of the crates Team Orange are hiding behind. They all huddle closer together as bullets whiz around them. Blake pushes Sun to get him to stop. Idiot, these crates are full of dust. Do you want to blow us all up? As the gunfire stops, Ruby peeks out real quick and sends her own barrage of bullets back at the villains. Hazel, still walking backwards, doesn't even flinch as the bullets bounce off his body. All the others run to take cover from the fire. Whoa, that big guy's tough! What do we do? Neo claps her hands and pulls out her umbrella, opening it just in time as Tok comes flying towards them, two swords drawn. Her blades bounce off of Neo's parasol and Neo charges forward, pushing her backwards. The glow on Hazel flutters away and he roars as he regains control of his body. He rips open one of the crates next to him and pulls out two dust crystals, one blue, one brown. He sinks the dust into his forearms and his veins glow as the dust courses into his bloodstream. Holy cow, he's really tough. Ruby, look out! Oscar grabs hold of her arms and pulls her away as Milsha comes cartwheeling over the crate. She spins on her heel and Jean has just enough time to pull up his riot shield to block her hit, though it sends him sliding backwards about 20 feet. Running up behind her sister, Melanie comes flying towards him. The girls glance at each other as they recognize Jean, but keep on pushing him backwards with their strikes. Oscar and Ruby look over, Jean defending against the Malachi twins and Neo defending against Tok. Before either of them can do anything though, huge rock spears come crashing through the last of the crates they hid behind. Raw dust and dust vials clatter across the ground as Ruby and Oscar scramble out of the way. Hazel's arms glow from the earth dust he just used, and he swings a fist and it crashes into the ground next to his first one, and suddenly ice spikes come shooting out towards Ruby and Oscar. Ruby uses her semblance and speeds out of range, quickly zipping past various crates and containers. Sun and Torchwick release a barrage of bullets her way, but she's too fast. Blake grunts and pulls out her weapon and goes running after her. Oscar, however, is pinned by an ice spear. It's piercing through his jacket sleeve, sticking him to a storage container. He pulls on the fabric and looks up just in time to see Hazel charging at him, elemental fists glowing. Oscar's eyes glow gold and the ice spears move in reverse, freeing him. The ice spears disappear and suddenly Hazel grunts and collapses, holding his arm. The ice dust moves in reverse, back into his arm as it does. The ice can be seen freezing his flesh as it passes back into his bloodstream. Hazel shivers and we can see his breath as if he's in a cold environment. Oscar smiles but doesn't have much time to wait around as a loud flare from Torchwick's cane comes blasting towards him. Oscar swings his cane and sends the flare spinning off towards the sky, exploding like a firework. We cut back to Ruby, slowing down from her escape. Rose petals flutter around her as she runs slightly more and dips behind another storage container. She's in the middle of several units, all lined up, creating narrow alleyways for her to dart back and forth into. She hears the clacking of Blake's heels behind her. Ruby holds her gun close to her chest and tries to slow her breathing so she can listen to the direction Blake is coming from. We also see Blake stopping and looking around. Her cat ears swivel as she pinpoints the direction of Ruby's breathing. Ruby tries to hold her breath and listen, slowly sliding up to the edge of the unit she's next to and peeks around the corner. Blake isn't there. Ruby sighs slightly, but turns just in time to see Blake's sword shining in the moonlight and ducks to avoid the attack. Ruby blasts into petals again and crashes into Blake's tummy, and the two crash into the ground in a cloud of rose petals. Blake kicks and sends Ruby flying upwards. As she ascends, Ruby spins and points her gun to the sky and fires around. The momentum of it sends her zipping back down towards Blake. Blake flips into a handstand and avoids Ruby as she comes crashing down to the ground with her scythe. As Blake rights herself, she sends out another high kick. Her heel pins Ruby's shoulder and she pushes her into a storage container. Just as Ruby levels the barrel of her gun directly into Blake's face, Blake raises her own gun and points it into Ruby's face. The two girls freeze as they have each other dead to rights. They're close enough where Ruby can see into the eye slits of Blake's mask and they stare into each other's eyes. Yellow eyes. Silver eyes. Blake, why are you doing this? 
Blake doesn't answer, but she doesn't move either. Ruby flinches slightly as more rapid gunfire can be heard back in the direction of the docks. Blake, you're in the White Fang. Yes. Blake sighs and raises her gun slightly. Do you know? No? Know what? Do you know about- Her voice trails away. Ruby can see she's assessing whether or not she should finish her sentence. Yes. I overheard you in Forever Fall. I know about relics, but I don't know any more than you do. I don't want to hurt you, Blake. I don't care that you're in the White Fang. I just don't want you stealing dust for that candlehead guy. Blake slowly lowers her heel from Ruby's shoulders and slightly lowers her gun too, though it's still aimed in Ruby's direction. And why should I believe you right now? What if this is just a trap? You'll arrest me, just like you and your mom did with Torchwick's other thugs before the school year started. Blake, I told you I want to be friends. I meant that, and I still mean it. You'll just have to trust me. Trust you? Yes, just like you did back in the Emerald Forest. We were still strangers back then, but we've gotten to know each other a bit more now. After everything, can you trust me? Blake stares at Ruby for a long moment, until finally she sighs and lowers her weapon. Ruby does the same and lowers hers too. I can't stop working for Torchwick right now. He's the only way I'll get more information about the relics. That's not true. Oscar said he knows something. He's Ozpin's understudy after all. You don't need to rely on just Torchwick. Blake and Ruby stare each other down, then Blake raises a hand to Ruby. Then how about we make a deal? We cut back to Ozpin's office, as Weiss and Penny get blown backwards and crashes through his desk and into a wall. Nora is glowing with pink lightning, clearly the one who landed the hit. Yang and Vernal on either side of her, and Mercury swings down from the gears above to join them too. The four start to close in on Weiss and Penny, both of which weakly hold up a sword to protect them. What do you know? These academy trainees are just a bunch of chumps. This place is a mess. We'll never find our info now. Maybe we could tie them up, and then use them as leverage to get information out of Ozpin? What do you want from Ozpin? Penny, don't talk to them, they're the enemy! I say we just throw them down the hole with the other one I stomped. Wait, wasn't there four of them? As he says this, suddenly Ilya's whip wraps around his neck and he goes tumbling backwards, choking and sputtering against the new weapon. Mercury! Yang dives to grab his legs, but she misses as he goes sliding off into a dark corner of the room. Oh no, you don't! She throws a punch and a flaming bullet illuminates the corner, but nothing's there. What? Where did he go? Nora points her hammer at Weiss and Penny. What's going on? How did you do that? Mercury suddenly screams and they all look upward, seeing him dangling above them, one of his metal legs stuck between two gears. Suddenly, Renal falls to one knee as if something had just hit her. Ow, what was that? What's going on? Penny doesn't respond, but we can see the apertures of her pupils dilate slightly as she seems to notice something. A yellow flash of Ilya's whip briefly illuminates the room and slaps Yang across the face, making her cheek bleed slightly. Yang growls and holds the injury, spinning in a circle trying to find the source of the attack, but sees nothing. There's a soft grunt and suddenly Yang bowls over on top of Vernal, as if some invisible force had kicked out one of her knees. What is this magic? Do you think it's a ghost? Another invisible grunt and Nora stumbles slightly, then again and again, taking a huge volley of blows from an unseen force until she swings her hammer mightily in the air. But just as her legs twist with her swing, suddenly they're kicked out from underneath her and she falls to the ground with a heavy thud. Weiss looks around at the bandits as they all scramble to recover, and suddenly, Ilya's voice is next to her. Are you two okay? Ilya? Where are you? Weiss's eyes squint, and we watch with her as she sees Ilya's shape next to her. Her body, eyes, hair, and freckles, all different colors to make her blend into the colors of the walls. How? H how? Oh, Ilya! You're like a chameleon! Weiss's eyes widen. You're a faunus? Big shout out for all the fan art again. Every single time, it's so impressive and cool. I appreciate it so much. You're all so impressive. And as usual, all the links to all the fan art is in the description below. Make sure if you like the fan art, go send them a bunch of love and support. Find them on Twitter and wherever so you can tell them how much you think their art is awesome because all of their art is so awesome. You should really just spread the love. Thank you so much. It's always so cool and creative, and I really appreciate seeing all the cool things you all do. It's, it's so neat. I, I really do love it. I cannot thank you enough. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you. Shout out to my $10 patrons. You're all amazing. Andrew, Valhalla Knight, Chamomile, Classy Critic, Noah Perkins, Sunny Shy, Genital War Thunder, Jake, Amber, Hype Man, Isaiah, Scaring Crows, Not All That Evil, Messiah Complex, Jacob, Ben Sketchbook, Rain, Omega Fighter, Trash, Wild Pilot, Josh, Twisty, Juan, Bunkin' Duncan, Like in 99, Hoodie Angel, Ranger, Hut Mutt Butt, Cloudy Days, The Enigma, C1 Trooper, and Sean. So yeah, I hope you liked this episode. It's almost there. There's one episode left. This was a huge one. So much art. So much art had to get done for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, There's one episode left. The big finale. How's it all gonna wrap up? Do you have any theories or ideas? What did you like or didn't like about this episode? Let me know. I hope you have fun as we barrel into the final episode. Episode 10. Next week is the last episode of Ruby Reversed Fates Volume one. So I hope you're excited. I'm super excited. I hope you all enjoy it. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.